Welcome to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. Join believers from around the globe to study the Bible with Andrew Womack and instructors from Karis Bible College. Hello and good morning. I want to welcome you to Karis Daily Live Bible Study. My name is Julianne Harris and I will be your hostess this morning. Uh, this is an interactive Bible study and we want you to interact with us, but in order for you to do that, you need to know our schedule. So our schedule is on Mondays and Fridays, we have Bible study at 10 a.m. Tuesdays and Thursdays is at 6 p.m. and Wednesday morning is at 7 a.m. and that is all mountain time. So please calculate that out, tune in while we're live, and then we want you to interact. So what's gonna happen is you're gonna hear Barry share this morning, you're gonna have questions and we want those questions from you. So in whatever forum you are watching, we want you to go down to the chat section and type those questions in. Then towards the last 10 to 15 minutes of the program, we're going to get to as many questions of your questions as we possibly can. We, you can also interact with this ministry by becoming a partner. Uh, it's absolutely amazing everything that's happening in this ministry and where the vision is taking us. And so I would encourage you to get on board and be a part of it. You can go to awmi.net slash give or give us a call at 719-635-1111. And last but not least, well, two things actually. First of all, we have prayer ministers available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So no matter what you're going through, there is someone on the line who wants to pray with you and see God move mightily in your life. You can give them a call at 719-635-1111. And the final announcement that I'm gonna let you know about is uh, Campus Days. We have Campus Days, which is gonna be the most amazing conference that we've had at Karis Bible College as of now. And so I would encourage you, it's April the 3rd, 4th, and 5th. Please go to karascampusdays.org, register, come onto campus. Listen, even if you can only come to one day, it will be worth it. Uh, come and taste and see all the different instructors of Karis and all of that. So I wanted to mention that. And so those are all my announcements. Now I get to introduce our minister who is Barry Bennett. His official title, which I believe, if it hasn't changed, is Senior Instructor. Far as I know. Okay, as far as we know, that's still his title. But he's an amazing man of the word. He was uh, my favorite instructor when I was in Karis Bible College, and so I know you're going to be blessed today. So, Brother Barry? Hi, Julianne. How are you? I'm good. How good. are you? I'm doing well. I haven't been here in a while. Oh. And I've been hearing from some folks out there. Where are you, Barry? Oh. My, uh, my teaching schedule during the year uh, is significant, so I don't always have time to uh, come over and do a live Bible study, but I love it when I get to, and this is one of those times. Amen. So anyway, I want to give an encouraging word this morning. I want to uh, pump you up, and I have to pump myself up quite a bit because the world we live in is a mess. And sometimes you can become discouraged. You can become overwhelmed with all of the, the darkness in the world, all of the things that are going on in our country particularly. And I find that what I have to do, what I need to do, and what I love to do is go to the Word and refresh myself in the goodness of God, refresh myself in the promises of God. And I'm going to do that with you this morning. We're going to be looking at the promises of God. And I'm going to be a cheerleader here, and I'm going to encourage you uh, that things aren't as bleak as you think they are, especially in your life. There is a way out. There is a way over. There is a way through. And there is a victory waiting for you if you could get the Word of God in your heart and get it coming out of your mouth. Things can change. Amen. So I want to start in Mark 9.23, and I'm not going to set the table for all of these scriptures. I have a lot of scriptures to share with you. But uh, this is the, the, the case of the man bringing his son to the disciples, and they couldn't heal him. And then Jesus shows up, and he heals them. And uh, he, he's in conversation with the Father, and he says to him, in Mark 9, 23, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Now, this is a powerful promise. This is an incredible promise because Jesus doesn't say, watch me, I can do this. You can't. Don't try this at home. That's not what he's saying. He's saying, if you can believe, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Uh, that's an incredible statement on the part of Jesus that the believer, and this man wasn't even born again yet, so move this over onto the other side of the cross, that we are born again, new creation, seated with him in heavenly places. If we believe, all things are possible to us, to 
to those of us who believe. Amen. So we, we want to look at this and it says all things and all things, we're gonna probably bring more definition to that in a minute, but all things that fall within the heart of God, the nature of God, the purposes of God for us. Those things are possible if we would believe in contrast to the enemy who is coming to steal, to kill and to destroy the corruption that is in the world, those kinds of things, those are not the will of God. And so Jesus is giving us an antidote, if you will, to the corruption It's called faith. If you believe, you can have things that other people don't get because they're not believing you are. All right, let's do another promise. Matthew 18, 18. Matthew 18, 18, Jesus is speaking. He says, assuredly, I say to you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. The word whatever, if you, if you can believe, and then now we're whatever. He, he, this is very inclusive of anyone that is able to believe. And then whatever you bind on earth, if uh, will be bound in heaven, whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Well, can, can I bind sickness? Can I bind uh, and, or can I loose a restored marriage? Can I, can I bind rebellion? Can I, can I loose blessing? What is this talking about? He says, whatever you bind, whatever you loose, whoever believes. And so we're entering into a realm here where we can, we can realize that Jesus is giving us the privilege and the authority to take control of our lives, to bring his influence through our faith into our circumstances. Praise God. This is, this is powerful. We need to believe that we can believe like that. I mean, a lot of Christians don't. Uh, sadly, a lot of the traditions of men have stolen some of these things. Uh, they've told us that whatever will be, will be. God is in control. God's letting this happen. God did it. God permits it. Who knows what God's going to do? He moves in mysterious ways. And all of these cliches that the traditions of men have used to suck the life out of the gospel mm. and suck the power out of the gospel. But Jesus' words, I think I'm going to go with Jesus' words on this and not what men say. Jesus said, if you can believe all things are possible and whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. He's putting this into our laps. He's not saying, I'll do this for you. He's saying, you do this. I won't look up this verse, but Romans 5, 17 says that we've been given the gift of righteousness that we might reign in life. Amen. Reign in life doesn't mean be a victim. And much of the church has taken on a victim mentality and be told, has been told that everything good has passed away and that we're just left hanging on and, and waiting for Jesus to come and whatever will be, will be. That's not what that says in Romans 5, 17. It says, we shall reign in life. And it doesn't put a time stamp on that. It, this expires in 20 years. No, this is for us now because it's the same spirit of God that was in Jesus, that was on Jesus, that was in Paul, that is on Paul, that is in you and that hopefully is on you. It's the same power. Amen. And so we have got to believe these things that we can reign in life, that we can loose healing, we can bind sickness, we can loose prosperity and favor and blessings, we can bind poverty. Poverty is such a curse. And most of the church has embraced it as a blessing. What in the world? So we have to get our thinking renewed. We need to be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Amen? Amen. Let's go on. Matthew 18, 19, the next verse. Matthew 18, 19 says, again, I say to you, so now he's going to repeat it. Again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done by them, for them by my Father in heaven. So we have whoever believes, all things are possible. We have whatever you bind. And now we have anything. If two of you agree as touching anything that they ask. Wow. I mean, these promises are just, that's why so many Christians struggle with this. Well, that can't mean what it says. It means exactly what it says. And God is looking for somebody to believe him. The thing most precious to God is that someone would believe him. Will you be that person? So few believe God. Hmm. They believe in God, but they don't believe God. This says, if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it shall be done for them by my Father who is in heaven. Again, it's in our lap, but the Father is willing. If two of us agree. Yeah. Now, first we need to agree with God. 
Right. But then we need to agree with each other. Your faith needs to be in the same place that my faith is. Mm -hmm. When our faith comes together and we're in agreement with the word and the will of God, we can bind, we can loose, we can agree, we can see right. things happen. And that's how we should be living. That should be norm every day. That should be our normal default believing God to see things change, to see yeah. circumstances change, to see sicknesses flee, <clears throat> to see health come, to bind things that are not of God. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Well, you can bind him. It says in James 4, you can resist him and he will flee. Now, that's a pretty good deal. Amen. The devil himself, I don't think any of us have probably seen the devil himself, but even if he shows up at your house, you can resist him and he will flee. Praise Do you God. believe that? Amen. So good. Let's go on. Let's do another one. One of my favorites, 2 Corinthians 1.20. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, For all the promises of God. How many? All. All the promises of God in Him are yes, and in Him amen, to the glory of God through us. There it is. Again, it's up to us to decide we want to believe this. And all of his promises, you can go to the Old Testament, there are promises. New Testament, there are promises. All of them are yes and amen. You say, well, Barry, don't those promises have a context in the Old Testament? Those are for Israel. They may have a context, but it's the concept of the promise. If it's something God wants to do for his children, you can believe it for you. Amen. You're his child. Amen. If it's a blessing for Israel under a worse covenant and we have a better covenant, then it's a blessing for you. Praise God. Amen. All the promises of God are yes and amen, but it says to the glory of God through <clears throat> us. We are the ones that need to believe. We are the ones that need to bind, to loose, to decree, to speak. We're the ones that need to do this, but first you got to believe that you can do it. But when God says this over and over and over and over, and he's saying whosoever, whatsoever, all things, these are very inclusive words that we have at our disposal, that we have the power of God in us. But you need to know God. You need to know His goodness. You need to know He's for you. He's not against you. He's not dragging you through the coals or over the cactus trying to perfect you. No, He's he sent His Spirit to teach you. He sent His Word to perfect you. He doesn't have to do horrible things to you. He's not making you sick. He's not allowing you to be sick. We're allowing ourselves to be sick because sometimes we believe, well, this must be God. God sending me a sickness to teach me something. No, he sent the Holy Spirit to teach you. He sent his word to teach you, not cancer. Amen. Having been through a cancer battle myself, that cancer didn't teach me a thing except I really hate cancer. Amen. Amen. And I really love health. Uh, and I, I got to learn more about my good father during that battle, but it, he didn't send the cancer to teach me anything. The word taught me how good my God is, and the word got me through the cancer battle. Amen. Amen. Let's go on. Let's jump over to 2 Peter. 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4. The more we spend time with God, meditating in His Word, meditating in His promises, meditating in His goodness, how good God is, the more time you spend marinating in this, the more this is going to become real. You're going to, this will be your new default. This will be where you live in these promises, in this potential, this whosoever, whatsoever, all things. These kinds of words are going to be words that are the first thing in your heart when something comes up. Second Peter uh, 1, 3 and 4 says, as his divine power has given to us all things, there it is again, that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him. I'll come back and, and comment through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you might be partakers of his divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Man, there's messages here, yeah. <laughs> lots of them. All right, so we'll try to hit these real quickly. But it says, he, all things that pertain to life have been given through the knowledge. So what is it that destroys us? My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Lack of knowledge. Mm. So the knowledge of God and knowing God, I would put those two very closely together, are going to provide all things for you for life. Amen. Everything you need to live victoriously is provided, but you got to know God. You can't do this ignorantly. It's, you've got to have a knowledge of God and you've got to believe God means what he says. 
And so a few people do. They think, well, that was a different age for somebody else, some other time. That doesn't mean what it says. No, it means exactly what it says. And then he goes on, it says, he is called, uh, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these, or King James says that by these, that through these promises, or how, are my, how am I going to reign in life? How am I going to have a victorious life? How am I going to, to conquer things that come against me or against my family? How? By promises. I've got to know these promises. I've got to know, the, because the promises reveal the heart of God. And they're all yes and amen to the glory of God by us, through us. So we need to know these promises because this is how we harvest the abundant life. This is how we reign in life, through the promises of God. So he says that we may be partakers of the divine nature, and that's the abundant life. And then it says, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. Does God want you to live in a world full of corruption and lust? No, he wants you to escape it. He doesn't want corruption to be your lifestyle. He doesn't want you to have mental issues, depression, fear. He doesn't want you to be sick. He doesn't want you to be poor. He doesn't want you to be under the slavery of, of corruption. How are you going to get out? By the promises. He's given us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might escape the corruption that is in the world. Whosoever believes, if you can believe all things are possible, whatsoever you say, if two of you agree, all the promises of God are yes and amen. These, these things begin to pile up. I, they're piling up in my heart. Amen. Amen. And it, it begins to get you going. Yeah. I mean, uh, life can drag you down, but you get into the promises of God and you start seeing the goodness of God. And all of a sudden your spirit rises up within you. That's the spirit of God. And you begin to say yes in the name of Jesus. I say yes to these promises. I say no to the work of the enemy. And you begin to cut a new path for your life. Praise God. Praise God. All right, let's keep going. So good. Let's go to Matthew 15, 28. And I'm going to really shock you here. Or I'm not, the Bible is. <laughs> Matthew 15, 28 says, Then Jesus answered and said to her, This is a Gentile woman. Let me set the table. I'm sorry. Uh, the Gentile woman <laughs> comes on behalf of her daughter who's demon possessed and is having a tragic situation. And so she comes and they have this conversation. And then Jesus in Matthew 15, 28, now I'm going to read it, says, Then Jesus answered and said to her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Now, this is what I'm going to shock you with. If it's a shock, I don't know. But <laughs> you can have what you desire. Ooh. This thing is so much in our court. The ball is in our court so much that God is not only wanting to do his religious will that many people try to classify everything as, well, maybe what if it's not God's will? He's saying it can be your desire. Wow. Where two of you agree on t as touching anything. Okay, whatsoever, whosoever, all things are possible to him who believes. Now he's adding this new wrinkle here, whatever you desire. You think, well, that doesn't sound like my church. <laughs> We're not allowed to have desires. No, you are allowed to have <laughs> desires. There's, religion has done so much damage to the gospel. But you can have desires, and we're talking about desires within the scope of the nature of God, the love of God, the goodness of God, the purposes of God for your life. All of those are good desires. All of those are abundant life desires. How many of you want more love in your family? How many of you want a better marriage? How, how many of you want kids that are blessed and have favor? How many of you want health in your bodies? How many of you want success in your lives and, and the favor of God, the blessings of God? All of those things are good desires. Amen. And they come from God. He wants you to have your desires, but you've got to at least believe that's even possible. Let's go back to the first one. All things are possible to him who believes. You mean even my desires? Yeah, even your desires. I have a desire for a vacation this summer with my wife. Amen. That's a God thing. Why? Because I love my wife like Christ loves the church. And if she goes to the beach, I get to go too. So that's a good deal. <laughs> so that's a desire, amen? Praise God. Uh, but God is for us, folks. God is not against us. God isn't trying to figure out how to take away all of our fun. Right. You know, it's like he's looking down from heaven. Is somebody having fun? We need to stop that. <laughs> stop that right now. No, he wants you to have a blessed life. He wants you to, why? 
Why would he want you to have a blessed life? Why would he want you to, to walk in joy and peace and love? Why? Because it glorifies him. Amen. People are going to ask you. People are going to ask you why. Why are you so happy? Why are you so blessed? People are going to want to know. It glorifies him. Who, who wouldn't want to know a God that loves his children and blesses his children? This is how we win people to the Lord. We need to have a victorious life. Amen. Amen. All right, praise yeah. God. Praise God. Let's go to John 15, 7. John 15, 7, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what <gasps> you desire mm -hmm. and it shall be done for you. If you abide in him, well, this is, I've been talking about this, just meditating in these promises and believing there for you is abiding in him and letting those words abide in you. And he says, when you get a hold of this, when you get a hold of how good I am, when you see that I've given you everything that pertains to life and godliness, when you see that all my promises are yes and amen, when you see that this is in, the ball's in your court, you speak. You declare whatever you believe, whoever you agree with. Amen. All of these things work together. And he says here, ask what you desire. Ask what you desire. You're not going to ask for some fleshy carnal thing. Why? Because you're abiding in him. Amen. You don't want to run off into the darkness with this. You want to run into the light where all the good stuff is. So, good. so whatever you desire, praise God. I desire, I mean, I sometimes when I speak and when I travel, I have a message about, uh, the gifts of God or something, I forget the title. And I ask, how many of you would like more? And they, I, didn't, I don't say more what, I just say more. And usually almost every hand will go up. Some people are skeptical. Uh, but how many of you want more? Well, your hand should go up. I want more of God in my life. I want more love. I want more joy. I want more peace. I want more prosperity. I want more health. I want more success. I want more favor. I want, I want everything there is. Is that wrong? You say, well, that sounds very selfish, Barry. No, God has given you all things that pertain to life and godliness. Amen. It's not wrong. He wants you to escape the corruption in the world. He doesn't want you to live there. He wants you to escape it through promises. So he says, you can ask what you desire. If you abide in what I'm talking about, if you abide in this goodness of God and let that abide in you, you can ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. His, mm -hmm. his, uh, in his name, abiding in his name is to abide in his love, in his nature, in his purposes. That's in his name. It's not a formula we tack on at the end of, the, uh, end of a prayer in Jesus' name. What does that mean? It means in his will, his purpose, his love, his joy, his peace, his nature, everything about God in him. That's, that's, that's abiding in him. And then what you desire is what he desires for you. Yeah. Amen. So All good. right, let's go on. Let's go to John 14, 13. John 14, 13. And whatever, there's that word again. Whatever you ask in my name that I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. There it is. I mentioned that earlier. Why does, why does God want to just shower us with blessings? Because he gets glory. Amen. People will see how good God is when they see how blessed you are. Amen. And it says, whatever you ask in my name, whatever you ask in my nature, in my purposes, in my love, whatever you ask uh, that, that reflects me within that, why would you go outside of that? Say, well, is it okay if I have a new house? Yeah, God doesn't care if you have 12 houses, 12 cars, three airplanes. God doesn't care. That doesn't bother God. Whatever you ask, why? Because... <laughs> Whatever you have faith for, go for it. Amen. If it's within the scope of, of God wanting to, to show his goodness to you so that you can show goodness to others, amen. Amen. Oh, I, I can just see some religious people falling off their chairs right now. <laughs> right? I can but, feel it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Get back on your chair and hang in there. We, we've lost the revelation of how good God is. Did you know he lives on streets of gold? Did you know he has gates of pearl? Did you know the walls of the city are of every gem and precious stone? God does not get nervous with abundance. We do because we know our own hearts. We're, we're afraid of the corruption of our own hearts. But when you abide in him and he abides in you, you won't be afraid of having too much because you realize when you get enriched, it's for all liberality. Second Corinthians 9. 
In other words, the more God blesses you, the more you have to give. Oh, I love to give nice things. I love to do good things. I, I love that, but I can't do it if I don't believe I should have it, if I'm afraid of it. But God wants to bless you. God says, whatever you ask, whatever you ask. Let's go on, Romans 8, 32. Romans 8, 32. I'm trying to give you enough to think about for a week here. <clears throat> Amen. Romans 8, 32 says, He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Have I convinced you yet that if he's given you Jesus and he's given you all the promises and he's given you what, whatsoever, whosoever, if you believe, if two of you agree, how much more do we need here? He says, if he's, if he's given you Jesus, will he not with him also freely give you all things? It's not God that is holding, withholding from us. It is our religious fear and our self-condemnation that is keeping us from believing this stuff. We've been taught that we're not worthy. We've been taught that we're guilty. We've been taught that we need to repent every 20 seconds. <clears throat> and so we have this burden of religious tradition on, that we've been carrying in this culture, in this country for a long, long time, hundreds of years and around the world. Nobody believes God is for them. Everybody believes they've got to do something that maybe he won't kill them if they do the right thing. No, God is so for you that he gave Jesus for you. And then says, I'll give you all things. Amen. Says in Matthew 6, seek first the kingdom and, and his righteousness and all things that you need in life will be added, not subtracted, not taken away, added to you. All these promises are yes and amen. Oh, this is, this, is, this is the gospel. There's a verse, I don't have it with me today, but Romans 15, 29, it says, I want, Paul says, I want to come to you in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel. Do you see that? Do you see the gospel in your life as a blessing? Or is it, a, is it something that makes you worried about, am I doing the right thing? Mm -mm. No, that's not the gospel. Amen. Jesus did the right thing for you. That's the gospel. And then he gives you all these promises, these exceeding precious promises that by these we might partake of his very nature, that's life, and that we might escape the corruption that is in the world through lust. He wants us out of the corruption. He wants you into the blessing and he wants the blessing to flow through you to others. Amen. We're not getting blessed just so we can swell up and think, look how blessed I am. No, the blessing is so that you can be a blessing because in that God gets glory. And praise God, and you're believing him. And that's all that God is really looking for is someone to believe him. Amen. Will you be that person? <laughs> Amen. Praise God. All right, let's go on. John 16, 23. John 16, 23 says, and in that day, you will ask me nothing. That day when he goes to be with the father, most assuredly, I say to you, whatever you ask the father in my name, he will give you. There's a whatever again. <laughs> I mean, I love th it. this is just, there's so much, and this isn't all of them. Amen. But whatever you ask the Father, well, is Jesus with the Father? Is he seated on the right hand? Is redemption complete? Is the enemy cast out of that? And, and Jesus is on the throne? Are you seated with him if you're born again? Are you seated with him in heavenly places? Has he given you his name? Has he given you his spirit? Has he given you his promises? Has he given you his covenant, his blood, his armor, his faith, his authority? What are you waiting for? All the promises of God are yes and amen. And they're for you. The promises are for you. They're not for someone else to, to do this while you sit back and watch. No, try this at home. <laughs> this isn't let some let a professional do this. No, you do this. Amen. You try this at home. You get up, you speak, you get a vision of this in your heart. You declare, these promises are for me and I'm tired of the enemy squashing the life out of me. I am going to stand up and take over. I am going to reign in life. Amen. Amen. That's not pride. That's humility and submitting to what God wants you to do. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. We'll keep going. Can you take some more? Yes. Amen. Psalm 37, <laughs> 4, because I got the, I saved the dessert for last coming up. Uh oh. Here. Psalm 37, 4 says, Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he shall give you the, there we go again, desires of your heart. Delight yourself in the Lord. Abide in him. It's the same thing Jesus said. If you abide in me, my words abide in you. Delight yourself in the Lord, and he shall give you the desires of your heart, of your heart. 
hmm. because your heart is so involved with his heart, it's the same heart. Hmm. And he wants, you to, he wants you to have good things. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be healed. He wants your marriage to be a blessing. He wants your kids to be blessed. The blessing of God in your home should change the environment of your home. The presence of God in your heart and in your mouth can change the environment of your home, of your workplace, of, of everywhere you go. You're walking around with the very presence of God just seeping out of you and touching everything. Amen. So Why? Good. Because you know him and you know his promises are for you. All right. Now, let's move to the, the, the big one. Okay. If you will, let's go to Mark 11, 22 through 24. And most of you know where I'm going here. <laughs> Mark 11, 22 through 24, it says in most translations, have faith in God. But that just doesn't strike me as what's being said here, because you could take that to be a very passive thing, a very resigned thing. Yeah, I have faith in God. It's going to all work out in the end. Someday, who knows? God's in control. Well, people, a lot of people call that faith. I call that unbelief, but they call it faith. <laughs> but it, and when you look at the Greek, it, it says have faith God is what it says. And what it means is have the faith of God. And the Young's literal translation says it that way, have the faith of God, which is totally different. But the, the BBE, the Bible in basic English, I don't read, but this, in this verse, they, they got it. It says, have God's faith. Have God's faith. That's what it goes on to describe is God's faith. Not you trying to work up faith, but the, the faith of God that's in you because God is in you, have that faith. And then it says, for I say to you, whosoever or whoever says to this mountain, whoever, there we go again, whoever, whatsoever, if you believe, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things he says shall be done. He will have whatever he says. Therefore, I say to you, whatever things you ask, when you pray, believe you receive them and you will have them. Amen. I mean, is that not a good promise? It's full of whosoever's and whatsoever's and if you believe and whoever <laughs> says it. Amen. It's, it's not God saying, well, I'll do this if I feel like it. No, you do this. You get a hold of these promises. You get filled with the spirit of God. You get a vision for things that can be better. Is there anything in your life that could be better? I bet you can think of a few things that could be better. Amen. Well, what's God's will for those things? He wants them to be better. Don't worry about what if it's not his will? If it's, a, if it's better, it's his will. If it glorifies him, it's his will. If it blesses your life so you can be a blessing to others, it's his will. Healing is better than sickness, believe me. Prosperity is better than poverty. Poverty is such a, a curse. It's part of this curse of sin that Jesus took on the cross. God never intended anybody to be poor. Amen. Amen. Uh, depression. No, joy, the joy of the Lord is better than depression. And we can go down the list. The peace of God that passes understanding is better than anxiety. Everything about God is better. <laughs> and whoever says to the, and then he, he doesn't say whoever says to this little tiny issue, he says, let me make this big for you. Let me, let me show you how big this is. Whoever says to this mountain, I don't care how big this is. Whoever says to this mountain, be removed and be cast into the sea and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that those things that he says shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he says. That's you. Jesus, again, didn't say, hey, watch this, but don't you try this at home. No, do this. You do this. You speak to this mountain. You get a vision that God is in you to reign in life, not to just muddle through and be mediocre. God wants you to reign in life. God wants you to be the victor, the overcomer, not the victim. Amen. God says, whosoever, you can have whatever you believe. All things are possible to him who believes. I think I've given you a lot of verses here. That you, I mean, you can't just say, well, that all passed away. Well, it hadn't passed away in my life. Amen. And I don't think it's passed away in Andrew's life Amen. or anybody around this area. <laughs> I mean, we, we are seeing some amazing things. Why? Because we are believing amazing things. Because we have an amazing God that wants to be glorified through demonstrating amazing things through us. Amen. Amen. We'll do one more verse, then I'll um, get into some questions here. Ephesians 3.20 might be my favorite verse mm. in the whole Bible. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now to him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us. Where's the power? 
It's in you believing God that God wants you to be the one who declares, who speaks, who believes, who, who reigns, who causes things to happen. He's able to do. God is waiting to do exceedingly abundantly more than you could even ask or think. And I can ask and think a lot. But it's according to the power that works in you. How much time have you spent with God seeing how good he is? If you abide in him and his words abide in you, ask what you desire. What do you desire? What mountain is in your way? What obstacle is there? You speak to it. You'll have whatsoever you say. It's according to the power that works in you. Amen the power that works in me. We all have God living in us. If you're a born again believer, God is living in you, Amen. waiting to express himself, waiting to let go, waiting to do things. It's, it, but sadly, religion and traditions have stolen all of this from us and we end up sitting on the couch doing nothing. And just, well, someday maybe God will bless me, maybe not, who knows. That's not, that's not the fullness of the blessing of the gospel. The gospel is the power of God unto salvation, escaping the corruption that is in the world. Amen. I have one concluding statement I don't want to forget here. Getting our minds renewed to the extravagant goodness of God is the beginning of having faith, his faith, work for us. Getting your mind renewed to the extravagant goodness of God is, is the beginning of getting his faith at work in you. Have God's faith. Amen. Have God's faith. I could keep preaching on and on and on. I'll stop. <laughs> Amen. That was so I, good. I hope this blessed you. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes, definitely. So are you ready for some questions? I think. <clears throat> well, yes, you are. Okay. Anna on YouTube says, Barry, what advice can you give me if I blow um, every little thing out of proportion in a negative way? I believe God, but sometimes I can't help to expect the worst, even if I feel a little symptom. Well, I, I don't know what to tell you. What's, what's her name? Anna. Anna. Anna, you just need to get into the word. You need to get into the promises. You need to see what God sees. He's rejoicing over you with joy. He doesn't want you sick. You need to believe God and quit evaluating everything with a natural mind. Start evaluating these things with the word. I just gave you a ton of stuff to think yeah. about. That's God's will for your life. All of these promises, they're for you. So you need to renew your heart and mind to this and turn off every other distraction. Don't go on the internet and look up your symptoms. Don't listen to all this negative stuff on the news. Get into the word, turn off the distractions until your heart is renewed to the will of God for your life. Amen. And then when you see that, you'll begin to say it. You'll get a vision of a new life. You'll get a vision of a victorious, healthy life. And you'll begin to say what you see. And that uh, that's a quickie, but that will get you started. Yeah, that's really awesome. So Lois on Facebook says, I have been very distracted and have gotten away from planting seeds of healing out loud. So what happens to the seeds I planted in the past? Do they just void because I haven't been consistent or can I pick up right where I left off? Well, pick up right where you left off. Yeah. I mean, every, every seed needs to be uh, cared for with water and sun, more light and yeah. more water. And that's what you do on a daily basis. You get in the word, you, you uh, meditate in these promises and other promises on healing or whatever, whatever you're looking for, whatever mountain is in your life. And as, as these things grow, get bigger within you, you begin, your words begin to change and you begin to speak. You can bind, you can loose. Amen. You can declare, you can remove mountains. You have the power because you have God's faith in you, but you got to care for the seed that you've sown. So I would say, uh, don't do guilt, don't go backwards, go forwards, move into the grace of God and pick up where you left off and just go for it 100 miles an hour. Amen, so good. Uh, Vanessa on YouTube says, I have been believing for my family's salvation for a very long time. And my parents are very old now. We have ex expiration dates on this earth. So how do I see what I believe come to pass? Well, in this regard, people need to believe for themselves. Yeah. What you can do with your love, with your grace in their lives is create an environment for them to believe. Uh, if they have questions, you sow the seed of God's word. You love them. You pray for them. They're going to have to make the decision, but you can do your best to create an environment in which they are wanting to make that decision to, to know the Lord. Uh, some people do it in their last day on earth and their last breath. We don't know people's hearts, but what you can do is be the one that, that reveals the goodness of God to them 
through your love, your joy, your patience, your kindness, your goodness, every, every way possible, the fruit of the Spirit, you just, you be that for them and give them every opportunity to see that and perhaps to ask questions and uh, love them into the kingdom. Amen. It's the goodness of God that brings people to repentance. Amen. And so we want to always be a minister of goodness to people, even no matter how lost they might be. Amen. So good. Um, so Denise on YouTube says, if we literally have only have one other person to agree with us on the promises of God and vice versa, is that enough? Yeah. All you need is God, really. <laughs> you can agree with God and get it done. But what Jesus was saying is we can multiply this power. You get somebody to agree with you. That's awesome. And you're both in agreement with God and then you're agreeing as speaking about to, or to something. Uh, that's more than enough. I think a lot of people think that they have to get the whole prayer chain together, right? No, because usually most prayer chains are, prayer chains are uh, filled with unbelief and, right. <laughs> and begging and pleading and Gossip. bombarding <laughs> the, the gates of heaven and all this kind of silliness. No, you, you don't need that. You need uh, someone that is on the same page with you Amen. in faith and go for it. Amen. Uh, this is a great question. When you were talking about knowledge, a uh, guest on chat says, so knowledge helps us to not perish. But Paul also says knowledge puffs up. Are they two different kinds of knowledge? Well, yeah, there's carnal knowledge, mental knowledge, just intellectual knowledge. And then there's spiritual knowledge. And what we want is the spiritual knowledge. Ephesians 1, 17, 18, 19, uh, maybe 20, talk about spiritual knowledge, revelation, spiritual wisdom and understanding. That's what we're looking for. Uh, intellectual, theological knowledge that some have puffs up, uh, but they have zero faith. So we're not talking about that kind of knowledge. We're talking about the knowledge of God. So good. So Carol on chat also has a great question. Uh, she says, how should a person maintain faith and belief while listening to doctors' lab reports that are not yet showing healing and wholeness? Well, been there, done that. <laughs> and, uh, I, you know, I was given a few days to live, yeah. two to be exact. And, and had all these negative reports and sonogram, uh, not sonogram, what are you, anyway, cat scans and <laughs> other kinds of scans. I didn't have a baby. <laughs> no, I had a tumor almost as big as one. But uh, anyway, I, so I, I, I know what that's like, but I just chose to not look at those things. I chose, I, I heard the news, but I had, I had a different word in my heart that I would not die, but I would live. That word kept me alive. Uh, I did not investigate. To this day, I have yet to investigate everything that was wrong with me. I don't want to know about it. I don't need to know about it because I had a word from God. So rather than listening to all of the negative, I would say, get with God. Father, you speak to me. I want your word. You have the last word, not the doctors. Uh, doctors have been surprised millions of times. Uh, we've heard so many testimonies right. of doctors. My own doctor said that when this giant softball-sized tumor disappeared, he called it a miracle. Uh, praise God. And so doctors don't have the last word. They're working on what they can see, what they know from medical experience. They're working in the world of the natural. I thank God for doctors. I have great doctors or had great doctors. Uh, but they don't know the spiritual side of things. You can, you should, and that's going to be the more powerful word if you get that uh, in your heart, that word of God in your heart. Yeah, so good. Okay, we got time for one more. So Tish on YouTube says, um, I've been asking for two years for healing for my eyes. I believe I speak to them. I thank him. It's already done. I've asked him what is blocking. What do I believe now? Well, you don't stop believing the word of God and you don't ask. You, you declare, you speak to the mountain. You don't ask the mountain politely to leave. You declare, you speak and you don't stop. I mean, there are some things by faith and patience, we inherit the promises That's Hebrews 6, 12. So some things take some patience. You don't plant a seed today and harvest it tomorrow. So while we would like things to all be very quick or instant, uh, they not always are. Some things take time. I've had instant healings. I've had a year long battle with cancer. Uh, some things just take time. I can't give you all the answers as to why, but I know this. It says, it's not my word like a, like a fire and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. And I think that's Jeremiah 23, 29, somewhere in there. His word is like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces. And some rocks are bigger than other rocks. And you've got to keep whacking at it with the word of God. But don't lose heart. Don't lose hope. Keep the vision alive. See yourself healed and keep speaking that way. And the, the physical will submit to the spiritual. 
Amen. 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 I know uh, Pastor Greg, he, he's like, you're a believer. That's what you do. Amen. So you never stop believing. Never stop. <laughs> Praise God. Well, that was super powerful. I know you guys have been blessed. And listen, um, with a lot of the questions that you guys are submitting, please call our prayer line right now at 719-635-1111. Allow someone to minister to mm -hmm. you, share supplemental information with you, stand on the word of God with you. And so please don't hesitate to do that. And Barry, thank you so much again. Amen. This is a, a joy to be back. And uh, hopefully I'll get a few more of these going. Oh, it's amazing. Amazing. Amen. So I know you guys were blessed. Don't forget we have live Bible study tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. And so until next time, we'll see you then. Amen. God bless. Bye. God has a purpose for every one of you. He doesn't enforce it and make you follow it, but I can guarantee you God has never planned for anybody to be a failure. Jesus has come to set us free. He's come to set you free from death on every level. He wants to heal you. He wants to bless you. He wants to prosper you. He's not out to get you. He's out to bless you. There's gonna be words spoken throughout the next three days that are gonna be transformative and necessary for us to step into the call that the Lord has on our lives. Join us every weekday for our daily live stream on Gospel Truth TV.